Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 53rd episode of Stories of Service, Ordinary People Who Do Extraordinary Work. And I'm the host of Stories of Service, Teresa Carpenter. And today, I'm so excited for this show. I always get really excited when I have fellow communicators and military leaders. As you guys know, I am a military-themed show many of times, and the idea that I can get somebody on like the gentleman I have on today is such a supreme honor. And I hope to bring you guys more military leaders as I'm in a very unique position that I get acquainted with people like uh, Captain Alata and the chances that I get to do these shows just mean a whole lot to me. So I'm gonna start off just reading his bio and then we're gonna get right into the questions. So as I was saying in the show notes earlier, the way society communicates in the age of social media has transformed our lives. And there's sometimes those rare military leaders among us who have found these innovative ways to reach diverse audiences. And they do this by so many ways, some by having fun, but really what this is doing, and we lost connection with him, but he'll come back, there he goes, uh, through the hard work and dedication of our amazing sailors. Meet to my, I think it's my right, Captain Jervie Alata. He took a non-traditional approach to a unit social media presence, and he decided to start his own Instagram account but using a personal intimate touch. He commands a massive audience with more than 70,000 followers on Instagram. On the CO, USS John P. Murtha page, you're gonna see shipboard operations, sporting events, morale building contests, but most importantly, you see sailors who are excited about the surface warfare Navy. And today we'll be talking as he reflects on his time in command and how using Instagram aided in communicating the mission of the ship and the stories of the crew. He is, as I said, the commanding officer of USS John P. Murtha, LPD-26. He is a surface warfare officer and son of a Navy chief. He is a native of San Diego, California, a proud graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy, and was named captain of the Navy football team his senior year. And he holds a master's degree in Webster's Uni from Webster University. At sea, he's also been on the USS John A. Moore, USS Pearl Harbor, and USS Comstock. He served as the officer in charge and commanding officer of the very first LCS Mine Countermeasure Mission Package Detachment and commanded the USS Comstock and USS Harper's Ferry. Then his staff assignments included Joint War Plans Officer of the 3rd Fleet, Instructor for the Sea Combat Command Syndicate at Tactical Training Group Pacific, Chief Staff Officer for Amphibious Squadron 1 and 5, Deputy Chief of Staff for Expeditionary Strike Group 3, Deputy Director for Surface and Mine War Fighting Development Center C Combat Division and Deputy Executive Assistant for the Vice Chief of Naval Operations. And he served on teams that have been recognized with numerous awards, including Battle Efficiency, Golden Anchor Retention Excellence, and the CNO Safety Awards. He is also the recipient of multiple Maritime uh, Meritorious Service Medals, Navy Commendation Achievement Medals, and Army Achievement Medal. Welcome, sir. Thank you. It's great to be here, Teresa. Thank you for having me. So first off, I always start my shows with a very basic question for anybody who served in the military, and that is, what inspired you to join the Navy? So that's an easy question for me. I know I, you mentioned in my bio that I am the son of a Navy chief. However, that's not why I joined. I joined only because I have a love for the game of football. Uh, when I was a young kid, I was, uh, you know, I had aspirations and dreams to play for Notre Dame. And, you know, when I was 10 years old, I wrote on a little piece of paper, I will play football at Notre Dame. And, you know, unfortunately, I wasn't big enough, strong enough, um, you know, quick enough to play for Notre Dame. But there was a school that was looking for um, a player of my caliber, and it was Navy. And um, it so happened that they played Notre Dame every year. And, uh, I knew that at the time. So, you know, a, a little kid with a little dream uh, ended up, you know, freshman year standing uh, on the 50 yard line, in South Bend, looking up at touchdown Jesus, wearing a gold helmet, not a Notre Dame helmet, but uh, a Navy football helmet. And I was able to accomplish my dream. And, you know, four years at the Naval Academy, uh, you know, not knowing what I wanted to do, um, you know, ultimately in my life, I just wanted to be a positive influence in young people's lives. I wanted to coach. I wanted to teach. And I didn't realize that I had the opportunity, the unique opportunity to do that in the Navy. So 25 plus years later, here I am still doing what I love to do, which is, you know, influencing young people in a positive way. 
I love it. And I think that sports are, are such an important thing for young people to get involved in because it gives people a sense of teamwork, a sense of uh, compromise, working with different types of personalities. There's so much good that comes from that. And it wasn't until uh, I started working for Admiral Bill Byrne, he just recently retired, that I realized the uh, significance of Naval Academy football. And uh, he, he, I don't know if you know who he is. He's a fellow service worker. He's my warfare. sea daddy. I love him to death. King yeah, Byrne. <laughs> he's amazing. Yeah, yeah, I love him. And, and I'm and not I a big football person, but he, he got me very inspired about Naval Academy football. Yeah, and it's not only about, um, you know, the positives. You know, it's, it's about dealing with adversity and being resilient and, you know, picking mm -hmm. yourself up after, you're, you know, you've had hard times. And that's kind of one of the biggest things I've learned through the sport. Um, is how to handle tough times because um, in these you know these times you have to be tough, uh, mentally strong to be able to handle the things um, that these young folks deal with. So I think the background that I've had through sports, through football, has really taught me a lot and helped me through my leadership, um, you know, challenges. Um, one of the things also that I learned about football is just developing the culture, the culture necessary um, to take an organization to the next level. Uh, culture of winning, about caring, about family, about love. And that's one of the things that I've kind of, you know, adopted through my time in the Navy and command is, you know, building the culture first, winning the locker room first, so that everyone's on board uh, after a common goal, after a common mission, going after it together. I love it. I absolutely love it. And it's so true. And, you know, sports gives you that. Um, I was in theater in high school and I had the same feeling uh, being a part of like just the backstage crew. You're still so part of a team and you're part of a, a performance. Um, so I want to now get into what this made you decide. There's so many things you could have done in the Navy. You know, you're going through the Naval Academy. What was made you say, OK, I am going to be a surface warfare officer? Uh, the, the honest answer is um... You know, I wanted to do something cool and sexy. I wanted to be a, you know, a Navy SEAL. But I realized that I don't like to run. I don't like the cold. I don't like to get dirty. Um, so I figured, you know, being a Marine or being a Navy SEAL probably wasn't the right uh, choice for me. Um, like I said, again, I wanted to coach. I wanted to teach. So being a Naval av Aviator, you know, two years or five years after you get your wings um, wasn't also in the card. So you know, to be honest with you, uh, being a surface warfare officer was the easiest way for me to get out of the Navy and to achieve um, or pursue my ultimate goal. My ultimate dream was to coach and to teach. I mean, that's not yeah. like a, that's not a good answer for the. No, I think it's a great answer. Right but I think through, you know, understanding that everything that I wanted to do, um, the way that I wanted to affect lives and, and be a positive influence in their lives um, to guide them, inspire and mentor them. I learned that as a young ensign, as a division officer, I was able to do that in so many yeah. ways. And as I grew into you know, that role and into my career with the added responsibility, the influence just got stronger and stronger and, and, and larger and larger. And I realized that this is what I was called to do. This is something that you know, I, was, you know, I was somewhat good at, able to connect with young sailors and get them to do um, you know, the extraordinary things in order for the team to accomplish the mission. I love it. And I think that you're absolutely right, sir. It's like the surface Navy and, and you know, I, I must admit I'm a little, I did have one me talk officer, but I've mostly just had, I'm a fire SWO myself. So I've had a lot of SWOs on the show. You're, I think my third SWO. And I, I agree with you. I, I just think it's like the heart and soul of the Navy is the surface warfare community because no, no other designator really says Navy other than SWO. And no other job do you go to as a um, unrestricted line officer where you're immediately thrust into a leadership position. So like you said, a pilot, you have to wait a little while on a SEAL team. You'll, you'll have a very small, very small team just initially. Whereas as a divo, you, you might be in charge of 30, 40 people as a very, very junior ensign. And so you're, you're hardening those leadership skills at a very young age, right after high school. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, I'm sorry, right after college. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I remember, you know, I was my first divo, you know, I was the ASW officer on a frigate and I had the sonar techs and I had torpedo men. And, you know, the amount of, you know, uh, maintenance checks, the amount of operations that they had, it blew me away. 
And, you know, not only was I a part of their lives with their equipment and their jobs, but there were young, you know, 18 year olds, 19 year olds that were asking me questions about relationships and about cars and about home buying. And here I am right out of college and they're asking me for life advice. What do I know about right. that? I spent four years living in a dorm. What do I know about buying a car? I was given a, a loan for, you know, a certain amount of money to go buy a car. Uh, but I mean, it, it, it kind of snaps you into life real quick, knowing that there are young people that are looking to you immediately. As soon as you footstep, uh, step foot on that ship, you know, the, the minute you are in front of them in formation, you are their leader. You are the guy that they're looking up to for answers. And you need to come prepared. And when I taught the young JOs, you know, going through BDOC, um, you, know, you know, just talking to them at the academy is everything that you're learning about leadership is purposeful. You don't take it for granted. You're going to show up on your ship or your, command, or your your squadron, your unit, and they're going to expect you to lead from day one. And if you take, you know, you, if you don't take full advantage of the lessons at the academy or whatever institution you're at, then shame on you because you need to be from day one, the leader that your people deserve. You absolutely do. And that kind of leads into my next question about, you know, your first, you know, JO tours and your department head tours where you were learning to get to the point where you are now. I, I'm curious, what were some of the biggest challenges you encountered? Like you just didn't expect. And then what did you do to overcome them? Um, challenges? I don't know. I, I don't think I had challenges. I think they're just opportunities to do great things. Um, you know, my jobs, you know, the jobs I had growing up in this in this Navy weren't easy jobs. They were tough jobs. It was a grind. But the harder the jobs, the more satisfaction I got from them. And I was able to, you know, the biggest challenge, I guess, for me is to see the people grow um, and progress through this organization. And if I if I didn't see them grow. Um, I didn't see them smile, and I felt like I was failing them as a leader. Um, so I guess the biggest challenge for me was trying to get to 100, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to affect every single person that is under my, um, you know, whether it was my division or my department. And right. if I wasn't able to connect with 100, I saw some people fall down the wayside or make bad decisions. I took personal ownership on that, and that was always a disappointing, you know, and any time, even in command. If I feel somebody struggling, if I see someone down, if I see someone sad, uh, I always take personal responsibility because I know that it is my 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 full responsibility to make sure that they get every opportunity to achieve whatever it is they want out of life. So when I see them struggling, um, I really take it personal. So that's always been a challenge for me. Yeah, and I think this kind of goes back to the fact that we're not always given the same good starts in life, and we're not always like. Not all of us um, were, were brought up in a, in, a, in a maybe a safe home or a home where we were supported. And then we get into the military and we're around others who were given that. And we're, and so we have to learn uh, how to adapt to those environments and then build that resiliency that let's say we really weren't given as a child. And so I, I can see where that's tough. And I think that your sailors who struggle more, I would argue, uh, sometimes don't always get that same start in life that some of the sailors that have less problems uh, get. And so you have to see where everyone is at and then be realistic, but then also just incrementally um, push them to the next level. Um, but but that's that where, yeah, that's that, those are the best stories though. When you see the, the folks, the young folks that come in that have experienced a lot of struggles in their childhood or in their youth, and then you're able to affect their lives and see them grow and see them mature into doing awesome, you know, great things. And when you're able to see that, and I mean, I look back and I, I still keep in touch with all the sailors that you know, I've had the privilege of serving with and to see how much they've grown uh, and matured. And, you know, I, I've, you know, I've seen young deck seamen, young firemen, now either lieutenant commanders, department heads, or master chiefs. It's always a blessing and it makes you feel like what you're doing um, is well worth it. Absolutely. I love it. And there's no there's no better feeling in the world to know that you've been able to make that kind of impact on people's lives. Um, I'm curious because, you know, like very like so many surface warfare officers, you know, you did your 
your ship tour is your department head, and then you led up to your major command, which is what you're in now. Um, what what do you think you took away from all the shore jobs that you've had? I saw that you did Third Fleet. You've done a few others. Um, what what how do those complement the times that you go back to sea? Uh, well, I learned that I am not a staff guy. I don't <laughs> like sitting behind a desk. I don't like do I. work. I like being out and about. I love shaking. Me too. I love meeting the people and just having a positive influence in their lives. Um, I think, you know, I've learned a lot, you know, you know, just from from the aspect of, um, you know, Navy policy. And how things work. And, mm-hmm. and how things work. You know, I, I had the pleasure of working um, with the greatest leader I've ever met, and that's Admiral Moran when I was a VA uh, at the Vice CNO's office. You know, the way that this man thought about things um, and still be able to connect and still be able to reach, you know, all walks of life, truly an inspiration. And, you know, if there's one thing I learned about leadership, um, it's about, you know, A, you got to be able to connect. And if you can't connect, then you're not going to be an effective leader. Um, And it's about influence. And, um, you know, Admiral Moran had a lot of influence and he did the job right. And if there's guys like Admiral Moran, Admiral Byrne um, are the ones that I inspire to be like, um, you know, as, as I progress in my career. Absolutely. And don't forget Admiral Brad Cooper. He was my uh, CEO on uh, USS Russell. And he's the reason to this day that I'm a public affairs officer in the Navy. He was also uh, another great man. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, he, his leadership reminds me a lot of, of what I see of yours. And same with Admiral uh, Bill Byrne as well. So it, it's interesting. Uh, I was definitely drawn to your content. And, and so are a lot of other people. Here's uh, Veronica Scott. And she says, Captain, changing perception of social media and military leadership. Hoo-ya to the world's greatest. <laughs> Be great every day. So, so now I kind of do want to get into some of the ways in which you co- you've communicated online and how that uh, aided in your command's uh, social media and, and strategic communication strategy. How did that even come about when you decided to take major? Because you're a captain. I mean, I could see something like this from a commander on a DDG or a frigate. But for you as a major commander, what, what was the what was the thought process behind this? So first of all, like the first the, when you made your your advertisement and called me a military influencer, like that blows me away. I never I looked at myself at that. Um, I don't have a strategic plan. The way <laughs> it started was I was sitting. We were in the yards. I took command in July 2020, and I, we were sitting in the yards. I was eating lunch with a young sailor. Uh, during COVID 2020. And I, I'm i the type of leader that I like to be in your face. I love to give hugs and shake hands. And I wasn't able to do that. We had a social distance. We had a, you know, we were duty section only. And I wasn't able to present my message to the crew the way that I normally do. And I had this dilemma. And I was talking with this young HM3 at the time. And she said, sir, the only way to get your message out to everyone in these um, in these times is to go on social media. I was like, I'm not a social media person. I don't have Facebook. I don't have Instagram. I don't have Snapchat or any of that other stuff. And she's like, well, it's easy. You want to show, you want me to show you how to do it? So we sat there on the, you know, in the mess decks. And she, what a story. What's that? Oh, yeah. So she then, she set up my program. She set up my whole account. And I'm like, okay, what do I do next? And I was like, she said, just talk. And so I talked and then she said, all right, now hit this. And it was like, post. And I posted, it was like my first one. And it was so awkward looking back at it. And I was just like, what was I doing? What was I thinking? But it, it touched individuals where I wasn't able to see them in person. And the next, you know, it just became a fun, you know, it become it became like, what else can I put out? And I was walking around the ship, just doing silly little things, silly little sayings. And I only had like 20, 20 followers at the time. And I, I was super psyched about that. Like I'm in 20 people and I felt like I was on top of the world. And then when I hit a hundred, I was like telling my daughter, listen, I got a hundred followers. How many do you have? <laughs> oh, I got 2000. So then it was always my goal to beat my, my daughter's, um, you know, not her follower count. And then it just became, you know, every time we recognized folks, every time we just did something awesome on board the ship, um, anytime we just had laughs, um, we would record it and I would just use it as content to show the folks that you may be in COVID, you may be in the yards, uh, you may be, um, you know, dealing with all the political and social unrest, 
But you know what? We're in the Navy. We still have to get after it. And we can still have fun while doing it. And I was trying to showcase that through this little Instagram page that had less than 50 followers for the first couple months. And we made the most of it. I, I know I didn't have a big following. I didn't care about the following. Like what no. I was were the sailors and their families. And even to this day, like people joke about, you know, that I should get verified and all that other stuff. I, I don't care about that stuff. All I care about is promoting the surface Navy, how much we can have fun, especially the two six family, show them all the awesome things that we're doing. We're running them hard. These guys are turning and burning, sacrificing so much. And I just want to be able to show their friends and their families, all the awesome things that they're doing. And that's how this all came to be. Um, how it spiraled is, I, I don't know. And I don't even care. I just know that the folks on board this ship walk out, you know, with their chests puffed up, with their chins held high, knowing that they're a part of something special on board this ship. Yeah, I think that's what why it resonated so much is that it was something that was so real and so authentic and so refreshing in the age of overly produced and let's be safe and just follow these rules to a T. Instead, you just said, here, this is, this is what we do. This is, this is the good. This is some of the ops we're doing. And I think that that just really just transcended, you know, any, any other barriers because you basically showed people at home what their sailors were doing. And, and, to that point, uh, you know, you, we did have a couple of people that says they, I guess you do a segment called How Mom. She said she said she loves your How Mom seg segments. And, uh, you know, and your leadership, it says it, it transcends branches. As a retired Army soldier, seeing his methods of how he leads is refreshing. So people are seeing this and they're going, wow, like th there's a leader that can that can do this. And uh, my that, that was my favorite segment, by the way. So there were mom requests and one mom, you know, who was following me just said, I have a request. I want to be able to see my son. I want to see his smiling face, anything you could do. Cause I don't ever get to talk to him. And I know he's busy. If you could just show me his face. So then I went and I saw this say that, and I said, I have a mom request and this is so-and-so, you know, mm -hmm. mom, here is your son. And what, you know, do you have a message for your mom? And it was just kind of off guard, you know, I caught him off guard, surprised him. And it was just that authentic nature, you know, kind of mom, yeah. like awkward, but it was so great. And then next thing you know, the request came in and it just became so burdensome to me, but I loved every single part of it. I, I would have 20, 30 requests and I went and I found every single sailor because it was important to them, it was important to their mom. And then it turned into cousin requests and dad requests, <laughs> best friend requests, roommate requests. And it just became fun for me just to be able, because it gave me an opportunity to meet the sailors as well and talk to, talk to them um, and see them smile. And anytime you can get a sailor to smile, it, it, it warms my heart as well. So it goes both ways. And we, we're, you know, we're enjoying each other and bringing each other joy. Absolutely. Um, Dark Phoenix 34512 says that you remind uh, them of Rear Admiral JT Lynch. He was my first CO on the BHR you ever meet him or know of him. So um, that's kind of interesting. You know, people do remind you of other people. Like I said, you, your leadership definitely reminds me of some of the admirals I've, I've served under. And I think that it's telling that it's the reason it has resonated so much is because like you said, people just really want to connect outside of their day-to-day -day life. They want to be connected to their families and to have this uh, outlet where they can have this personal uh, connection uh, with others is really meaningful. But I have to know too, um, it's, it's very technically savvy now. So now I want to know, like you've got the blurred camera, uh, which I assume is the brand new iPhone. I've been told the brand new iPhone will do that. So, so how are you managing <laughs> the technical aspects of this? As you said, you're not very technically savvy. Yeah, so I had an iPhone six. And I ran out of data. I think I had like 64 gig. And I had to delete old stuff. And I'm looking for old stuff. And I deleted it because I had to make room for more content. Right. So then I got the new iPhone mini. So it's still small because I like small phones. And then, you know, my daughter was showing me. And I just recently at her graduation, she graduated from the Naval Academy. She showed me the cinematic um, right. option or whatever that is. And then, so I used it. 
and it was just so good. The content oh, was, was that much better. And then it's, it was so good that I got everyone on board the ship to start doing cinematic. And you know, and I'm, now I'm critiquing them on their techniques, and I became the guy that's showing them how you know to properly film things so that you know it could be an epic reel. So that's now I mean. the old boomer wow. is showing these young cats how to do videos. I love it. I absolutely love it. And and you know, like like I said, I was telling somebody earlier tonight. I said we need to be teaching this stuff at the Defense Information School, okay. whereas PAOs go to school because that is the way people resonate with content now. They just they have so much other things going on, and social media is so all over the place and ADD ish. But then to watch like a really meaningful reel set to music where you do the, you take the time and it's time consuming to do the cuts, to show different, you know, slices of a theme. Um, I, I think that's really remarkable. And do you have a team of people who are, who are working with you? You have to be. I, I have a team of one. So no one has my password. Uh, if anything, they'll provide me, you know, some videos, but I take the best videos on board this ship. You can ask anybody, uh, but no, it's, like I have, like through a course of an underway, um, I just walk around the ship, um, you know, talk with folks. And then if I see something, I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Let me take a video of that. Like I walk through the galley every day and they're always cooking, really happy, jamming the music. And I always just go in there. And when I see a moment when they're just together as family, enjoying themselves, enjoying their job, I just capture it. And I think I've had several reels of them in the galley having so much fun and doing their thing. And that's why, like, you know, we, we talk about high morale. It all starts in the galley. And when mm -hmm. they're when they're having fun um, cooking and, and, and just loving their job, the food turns out great. And then when everyone gets good food, they're happy and smiling, talking about how great the food was. And then they get the energy to go out and do their job. Um, and people kind of take that for granted every now and then. So it all kind of, you know, you, 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 you have to think about where it all starts. Um, and that's where I try to capture it, whether it's in the well deck, in the galley, on the bridge, on the bridge wings, capturing the epic sunsets. Um, you know, I'm always ready uh, with my camera ready, uh, on, on, you know, to, to capture that special moment. All right. So the questions are pouring in. So I'm going to get to the <laughs> audience now and, and get a couple questions. So uh, Krista uh, Gun Gunsoli, who I met uh, today at the NAV or yesterday at the NAV Info uh, War or NAV Info uh Mental Health Summit. So anyway, she asks, uh, sir, did you ever hear that you're being too vulnerable or too connected with the junior sailors? Sure. I hear that all the time. And I say, so what? You know, and <laughs> it's, it's being a leader is having influence. And if I can get sailors to perform way above their capabilities, who cares how close I am to them? If they mm -hmm. know that there is a line and they know that their job is to, you know, to be the best at what they do, regardless of how close we are, um, you know, and they all know with me that I have an open door policy. They can come talk to me about leadership, about life, about love, about their jobs, uh, about society. And I'm going to stop and talk to every single sailor. Is that being too close and too vulnerable? I don't think so. Um, but they know that I expect a lot out of them. They know that I don't like losers. You know, if you're a loser, then I don't want you on board this ship. I need winners that are that love their job, passionate about their job, their job, and produce results. And you know, trust yeah. goes a long way with me as well. If I can't trust you, then I don't need you on board this ship. And if you're doing wrong, if you're blurring the lines of you know frat or whatever, then I can't trust you. So they know right. my expectations. They know what's expected out of them because I'm very open and honest about it. Very transparent. And I love my sailors. I wake up every day thinking about how I'm going to make myself better so that I can be a better leader for them. Now, if that means, you know, people, there's a perception that I'm too close to them, they don't know what we're doing. They don't know how fierce warriors I have on board this ship. You know, all they see is, you know, all the fun that we're having, all the, you know, the joy, you know, that we're celebrating with each other. But they also don't realize that we don't lose on board this ship. We've done so much in the last two years, three out of area deployments, um, you know, NASA certification, um, 
you know, the yards getting out early, early basic phase. We just finished inserve. There's so many things that this ship is absolutely killing and crushing. Why yeah. not expose all the great things and all the joy that we share with each other? And that's exactly what kind of John Cordell, he is the director of human factors for uh, Surflant and a friend of mine. And he said, great discussion. Can you draw a line from this initiative to war fighting readiness? I'm sure there are ties. Absolutely. Um, you know, you talk about, you know, they always say um, mission first, people always. I don't believe that. I think it's people first, the mission will follow. You, you mm. take them to people and the people will ensure that they don't lose, that the mission will get accomplished. And that's kind of the tact that I've taken my entire career. You take care of the people and they will do anything for you. These folks, these young sailors are so good. They're smart, mm -hmm. they're well-trained, and they just want to be inspired. They just want someone that cares about them so that they can go out and do their job. When folks are doing their job or when folks are here at on the ship and they don't feel like people care about them, they're not going to give you their 100%. Right. They're not going to give you their all. But when they feel like they're cared about, that somebody's taking notice of their contribution to the family, they're going to continue to work even if that means more sacrifice, just to make that person proud. Absolutely. And this kind of gets into, um, because this is a unique way of communicating and, and, and having that personal relationship with your sailors. And I'm curious, and a couple people asked this, Julie Holland asked it, and so did the move you. And the question is, is basically, uh, what has been any of the thoughts from senior leadership on the way that you're communicating and how have you, how have you handled that relationship? Because this is a very uh, new way of a leader communicating. We've seen a lot of sailors communicate this way on social media. You're the first I know of with such a large charge of sailors uh, under your command who's doing it. And I'm curious at how you've been able to mitigate that also taking into concern OPSEC, which is operational security. So to be honest, I haven't heard anything from senior leadership. I've heard uh, nothing, um, you know, just kind of the mid-level. Um, and folks have said how much they love it and how much it's changing the game. Um, but I haven't heard much from senior leadership about, um, you know, what I'm doing. So, um, and, and it doesn't change my approach. It doesn't change how I think about things. You know, if someone tells me, hey, that's a violation, I'll say, okay, I'll take it down. That's happened once. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, you know, I, I don't get wrapped up in, um, you know, what other people think. Like, if I'm doing something wrong, I, I hope they tell me and I'll, you know, mm -hmm. adjust my approach. Um, but I haven't heard anything, you know, since I started the, um, you know, the account. So I feel like I'm doing something right because no one's stopping me yet. And I'm going to continue to be me. I'm going to continue to do the things that are helping the crew. Uh, and making them feel proud of, you know, the family that they're a part of. Absolutely. And I think that what it is, is again, you're the one person out there in a leadership position who has learned this art, because it really is, it's an art form to communicate the way that you're communicating and using the tools and understanding how to do the camera angles. And, you know, you, you really, you, you got onto the, the deck plate level with the way that young people are communicating today not in the ways that us traditional PAOs have communicated through command social media pages. And I think that's really remarkable. And I think that, uh, like I was telling you before the call, it's only a matter of time before the public affairs community is going to follow with this way of communicating. And I think we're going to see more and more of this as time goes by. And so now I'm going to shift. Oh, go ahead. Well, so I, I've always been bold. I've always been um, kind of that out of out of the box thinker, um, and I think through the course of this account, um, I think I've earned some credibility. We have earned credibility because it's not just about the fun and games; it's no, about it's the operation itself and about mission readiness, like the gentleman talked about. It's about winning, and everything that this crew has done, we have met every task. And I know that the the, the people are struggling mentally because of the amount of time we've been out to sea. Um, I know the folks are struggling and I know that, and I can feel it because I feel it too. I missed my son's senior year of high school. Uh, I missed my, you know, my daughter's almost her entire senior year of college. So I'm struggling too, 
But the way that we can rally through social media and show them that, you know, that we can bond as a family while still being badass and, you know, the mission and, you know, and, and, uh, and accomplishing every task that has been brought to us, um, it shows that you can have balance and then you could do all of it um, if you just if, if you just put your mind and body and soul to it and you commit to it. So mm-hmm. I think you know, with the culture starting from the top, being as infectious as it, as it is here and it starts to trickle down and everyone else has that same mentality, um, it's almost like you create this cult where the ship is so good at what they do and they're so prideful that they don't want to lose. They want to be bold in, 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 in who they are and what they represent when they wear the two six. Um, and when you have a ship that all believes in it and it's all bought in, um, it's a it's a very scary thing. Absolutely. And it is it is a very uh scary thing i think for some senior leaders to do what you're doing but i what i hope they understand is that by you doing it and setting the example and showing people that it's possible we're going to see more senior leaders being able to do this and have you good question by kaylee here have you had senior other senior leaders coming to you and saying gosh i I see what you're doing i see how it's resonating can can you can you show me or have you had anybody ask you questions about it? No. No. I I, I don't know. I I don't see too many other senior leaders with their own account. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I I don't know. Um, I, no I, one's I, ever reached out to me again. Like if anyone ever like I answer every single DM. I answer mm-hmm. every single um so, you know if anyone I don't read comments in in the reels or the posts, but if they DM me personally, I write back to every single one of them. So if anyone wants to reach out and see what I'm thinking about, uh, how, you know, the process works, I'll be more than happy to, because I mean, it's, it's no skin off my back. It's a few seconds of, of teaching and learning. Absolutely. And William Laura asked kind of the same question about a lot of people are asking about the blowback and, and just to let you know, William, we did answer that question a little bit earlier in the call. So just, uh, you'll be able to get, listen to the playback later and, and kind of go through, go through that. Um, as you re- so you're now at, towards the end of your command. Um, are you able to say where you're going next? Yeah. So um, my change of command is Friday, and I'm mm-hmm. going to uh, Colorado Springs to the um, the Missile Warning Center at Space Command. I'll be the director of the watch floor. Wow. Okay. I'm going to space. I'm going to be <laughs> the head guardian. Nice, nice. Well, the Space Force is, is a very new and dynamic force that is uh, just coming online. So that's going to be a very exciting opportunity for you. As you reflect back, because uh, I think it's good to sort of now sort of go full circle with the, the years that, because you've been in command for, for what, 18 months, 24 months? Uh, two years, yeah. 24 it's months. July okay. 2020. Okay. So as you reflect back, what would you say are the biggest uh, the, the, what are the what are the biggest highlights of your of your time in command um so obviously i have operational highlights you know getting out of the yards early um uh, completing basic phase in record time um the three out of area deployments i mean i can go on and on winning battle league which is a team award and i'm all about you know team awards the crew has achieved so much and i'm super proud of all of them um you know as, as far as biggest achievements i think it's seeing all the people that have made rank you know all the ones that have put on anchors all the ones that have achieved their quals and you know even like there was two today that just got their citizenship and being able to shake their hand and say congratulations um you know welcome to the family anytime i have an opportunity um to recognize folks to see them grow and progress uh to see them do the cool things that they were trained to do that's a huge win to me. And that's what brings me joy. That's what brings me smiles. And it's those kind of things that, you know, allow me to wake up every morning excited to get to work because I have so many people um, that are doing awesome things. I just want to be cared about and recognized. And when I have that opportunity and I can see it through metrics, when they promote, when they get awards, um, you know, when they, when the team wins with awards, uh, that's always been the biggest achievement uh, for me. Well, you're definitely getting a lot of love here. There's a lot of people on, on the comments. I, I encourage you to look at the comments later. They'll be on uh, 
my Facebook, they'll be on uh, the YouTube and also on LinkedIn. Some of the ones that I haven't get a lot of them are just sort of comments and general feedback from the call. Um, my friend Ruben, for an example, said amen to this philosophy of leadership. I've seen it in action. And he's also seen the damage an uncaring leadership can do. I think we all have. And uh, it's refreshing to see your leadership in action and as transparently as, as it has been on social media. A couple of people have been asking, too, what's going to happen to your page after Friday? Uh, I'm <laughs> oh, sure that's, you've been that's, on that's the crew. A hotly debated uh, topic. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. I, I don't know. Like, I may just drop out uh, on the face of the planet. Um, uh -huh. Or I may keep it going with, you know, with kind of leadership tidbits. I don't know. Like, this is, it's been such a, uh, just. Ah, we lost him, guys. Well, let's see. Let me give him a minute to come back. Oh, there you are. All right. Unmute. Okay. There there go. Go. Yeah. All so right. I mean, you might do leadership tidbits. Leadership tidbits. Oh yeah, so I, I may keep it um, just to you know talk to the fleet, talk to you know CEOs, talk to sailors who are struggling. I don't know. Um, I think you should. But I really again, like, like I, as far as the CEO USS John P. Murth, I don't know. Like I'm not going to be the CEO. Maybe give it to the next CEO. Um, but it's it's kind of been you know something that's been near and dear to my heart. Something that we've created on our own. And it's just kind of taken off and given life to, you know, this family. Um, you know, I'd hate to see it go. I'd be brokenhearted. But I also know that, um, you know, I, as, as, as I go with the page goes, I don't know. Like, I, I still struggle yeah. with it. Um, I, I don't know where it's going to go. And it's, yeah. I got, you know, half the folks saying that it should go to the next guy. I got half the folks saying the page is you. And it's not going to be the same without you. Uh, it's been a real struggle. So I don't know. I, I think that as you keep going, it would be amazing for you just to keep owning it because you're setting an example for other senior leaders that this is possible. And I would love, I'll be honest with you, I would love to be your PAO and then be able to do something like this with you. And if I had ever had an admiral that knew how to do what you're doing and understood the power of what you're doing, it, it, you know, and, and again, I've had amazing dynamic admirals, don't get me wrong, but uh, the fact that you took it on yourself to really learn this tool and use it as such a powerful way to educate about leadership and show people the surface warfare Navy. I'm sure there are people out there who have decided to go swoe just based on looking at your Instagram page. And that's powerful. It is. Very and, but but I also remember that it's not about me. Um, it, you know, I started the page. Right. You know, no, that's true. To, to showcase the family here, to showcase all the things that they're doing. So I'm not going to go out and make it about, you know, me. And that's the last thing I want to do. Um, so it's, it's something that's been wrestling with my mind because I still want to be an influence um, to, to young folks. I, want, I still want to be an influence where I can be. Uh, my, the ultimate, um, you know, my ultimate job um, is, you know, to be at a learning institution where I can affect young lives and help them grow as young leaders. So if I think I'm able to achieve that um, in some form or fashion, of course, I'm going to keep this page or just have some form of social media like this so that I can reach out and, uh, and, and still you know, pr produce some epic stuff uh, for them all to watch and, and maybe get some sort of motivation, inspiration from. I love it. And I, I hope that you consider keeping it going. And I hope that the Surface Warfare Navy, Surf Corps, Surf Pack, uh, they're, they're paying attention and uh, they could really be leveraging uh, this page. Uh, again, it, like you said, it's not about you. It's about what your page has brought to the Surface Warfare Navy, what it brings to the mission, how this aids in warfighting and readiness. And uh, I thank you so much for your time. We're going to uh, close off of this page. Uh, we will. There's, there's, there's Jada right there. She finally got it from her nap. But um, <laughs> see that little dog in the background just peeking her head out. But um, we will uh, pick this up just for about 10, 15 minutes on an Instagram live. So for those of you who do follow him on Instagram, uh, you'll see him on my live here in just a moment. But um, I do want to thank. Oh, there she goes and whines and stares at herself in the mirror. But I do <laughs> thank all of you uh, for for watching. Um, I just enjoyed this conversation immensely. So did uh, everyone else who joined us. 
Uh, it's been a very, very well attended session as I knew it would be. So I'll meet you backstage in just a moment and we'll just kind of go over the logistics for the Instagram Live. But uh, I wanna thank all of you guys uh, for watching tonight. Might be a little bit of time before I can come on here again uh, as I am moving uh, to London uh, next month, uh, going to a NATO command. I gotta be there mid-August and I have a couple trips before then. Hopefully I'm gonna have my uncle Bill, uh, he's an archeologist, amazing gentleman on when I go back to Columbus. I'm still trying to work that out, but uh, love you, the support guys for the show. Thank you guys all for watching. Enjoy the rest of your evening and have a wonderful night. Bye-bye now.